Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're having some issues identifying the multiplicity. Please note, ladies and gentlemen, that each of these powers, if you guys remember, you wrote down the definition of multiplicity. And I told you, it's one of the harder concepts for students to not only understand, but for students to remember. When you're looking at multiplicity, you're only, you can only look at multiplicity when your factors are linear. So I wrote the little one as the power of my, of my variables. So you guys can see these, each factor inside the parentheses is linear. Richard, do you see that? Does everybody see how each factor is linear? Yes? No? Yes? Now, since each factor is linear, we look at the power of the factor. So I'm going to circle that in a different color. The power of the factor is your multiplicity of the 0. And if you guys remember in the definition, it says, you know, at, you gotta, this is the multiplicity of the 0. So what we need to do is find the zeros. So we replace y with 0, which I saw a lot of you do. And we apply the zero product prop property. Right? It's most stuff that everybody got to. And then everybody seemed like they understood um, to find x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Everybody really got to this point. But then we started having trouble with understanding this. Well, remember, guys, if these are the solutions or the zeros or the roots of our equation, if they're real numbers, they represent the x-intercepts. So we plot the x-intercepts. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. Does everybody agree with me? They're just intercepts, correct? These are your intercepts. However, what we discussed last class period is not all intercepts are exactly the same. If you guys remember, even when we talked about quadratics, remember we did this? We did like the solutions? A quadratic can have two solutions. A quadratic can have one real solution. Or a quadratic can have no solutions, correct? Do you guys remember we talked about this? And what I said was, when it has one solution, it has one solution, but the multiplicity is 2. Because what happens is you can have an x-intercept where the graph crosses. You can also have an x-intercept where the graph bounces. And the only way we know it bounces is when the multiplicity is even. So the multiplicity could be raised to a 4. The multiplicity could be raised to a 16. It could also be raised to a 2, which in this case we do. However, just because it bounces doesn't mean it always bounces up. The graph could also bounce down, right? Because that all depends on, is the graph opening up? Is it opening down? That depends on the end behavior. So to determine if the graph, if it bounces up or bounces down, we need to determine what the end behavior is. So we got it. You could multiply this all out, but it takes so much time to do that. There's no point in doing that because all we care about is the end behavior. And when we care about the end behavior, we just care about the degree and the leading coefficient. So if I was to multiply x minus 3 squared, the highest power that I would get in my terms, multiplying them, would be x squared. We really don't care what the rest of it is for this problem. Okay? And if I was to do x plus 2 squared, I would get, again, x squared. Again, we really don't care what the rest of the product is. But if you don't understand where I got x squared, then spend the time and multiply x minus 3 times x minus 3. And you'll see that the degree would be, or the leading term would be x squared. Now, if I was to multiply these two, we know that the highest power I'm going to get, there's not going to be a, or the highest degree is going to be x squared times x squared, which is going to produce x to the fourth. So I'd have y equals x to the fourth. That is my degree. And my leading coefficient is 1. So we have to go back to our end behavior. When we have the end behavior as an even degree and a positive, um, positive leading coefficient, the graph does what? Anybody? It goes up left and up right. So we know the graph goes up left and up right. So ladies and gentlemen, is it possible for me to graph this with bounces going down? No. All I do is connect. Oh, this goes up. Well, i got to connect it over here. OK, so I'll just do a little loop. I'm going to go like that. So there is no bouncing going down in this problem. Just goes like that. OK? Um, I didn't see too many people get to the hard one. But this one really 